Good morning and welcome to our Ontario Church and the online ministry. Well, this morning again, we will be studying from Book of Daniel in midst of COVID-19. And it is my personal prayer that even in midst of COVID-19, even though our congregation cannot able to come together as a Christian family, please, in Christ, stay fit, stay healthy, stay happy, and stay safe. To our Ontario congregation, before we dive into the message, I just want to give a friendly reminder once more that today's message is again to give to our next generation of Seventh-day Adventists. Our next generation Adventists might be sitting with their parents at home or with their friends as a junior and high school and college students. And to our young adults, you are a very important part of our Seventh-day Adventist community. And thank you for your ministry. This morning, our sermon title is called Book of Daniel, number five. The verdict is in. And the Bible text is from Daniel chapter 4, verse 17, and it says, The decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdicts, so that the living may know that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth. Nineteen eighty-four, the TED Talks, which stand for Technology, Entertainment, and the Design Organization, started out with a perfect slogan: "Ideas worth spreading." And this innovative movement drove many individuals to join the TED Talks movement because people want to spread a good ideas. And because of these good ideas, many individuals to seek life-changing challenges and strive to alter their life for the better because someone spread a good ideas. Well, in Daniel chapter 4, we find the king of Babylon want to spread his life story and his personal testimony. In fact, king is sure that his story is worth spreading. And in fact, King of Babylon actually wrote Daniel chapter 4 by start. Chapter 4 of Daniel was intended to be an open letter that was to be read publicly throughout the Neo- Babylonian Empire, and it includes a long confession streaming from the kings of personal experience enhanced by praise to God crafted in the style of the praise hymns. 2,500 years ago, something happened to that king of Babylon. And he was not afraid to share his testimony within his empire. So from the Daniel chapter 4, let's read on. Verse 1 and 2. King Nebuchadnezzar, to the nation and the people of every language who live in all the earth, may you prosper greatly. Verse 2, it is my pleasure 
to tell you all about the miraculous sign and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. Daniel chapter 4 is indeed an open letter from the king to the all nations. It's about his story. It's about his testimony, how king encountered the most high. For the king of Babylon, this was his third direct encounter with the most high God. In Daniel chapter 2, God, in King's dream, showed him personally the future events. Daniel chapter 3, God is with Daniel's three in the blazing furnace, and this king was right there witnessing all the events. And in Daniel chapter 4, God personally sending a judgment called to the king of Babylon. So let's continue to read king of Babylon's experience in first hand. Verse 29 and verse 30. It says, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, is not this the great Babylon that I had built as a royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty? Well, he was right. Babylon, one of the seven wonders of ancient word. The city contains 53 temples, 955 smaller sanctuaries, and 384 altars. Babylon was indeed an international center of trade and industry and commerce. King was very proud of his kingdom. And rightly so, he felt that he himself made this kingdom. Now, during that time, while, while he was keep saying, I, my, and for my glory, during that time, in verse 31, even as the words were on his lips, a voice came down from heaven, and it says, This is what is decreased for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you, and you will be driven away from the people. You will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdom on earth and give them to anyone that he wishes. Because of king's pride, judgment not from Daniel or from his kingdom, but judgment from heaven came down. And proud king will live now as a mental broke down human being like a mad man. Living outside with wild animals and eating a grass like the ox. And that judgment period to him was, according to verse 32, seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge. So Daniel chapter 4, verse 32, seven times means, no, not seven days, nor seven weeks, or seven months. It literally means seven 
full years that he need to live like a madman. One of the historian book tells us it has been pointed out that between 585 BC and 575 BC, a period of total of how many years? Seven years. Nebuchadnezzar's army undertook no major military operation. Pretty amazing story. Well, king of Babylon was warned over and over and over through the Daniel chapter 2, chapter 3, and especially chapter 4. Especially 12 months before the Daniel chapter 4 story was about to take place, king was warned through his dream, stay humble. He has witnessed what was taking place in Daniel chapter 2. He saw in first hand Daniel chapter 3. He received a message through the dream in Daniel chapter 4. Stay humble. It is quite clear, and the Bible makes it very clear, that God hates pride and man with proudness. God just hates it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34. God mocks proud mockers, but show a favor to the humble and oppressed. James chapter 4, verse 6. God opposes the proud, but shows a favor to the humble. In the gospel, Luke chapter 18, verse 14, Jesus said, for all those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. If you turn to the dictionary and look it up, pride, you will see a two different definition. First definition is about one's work, wholesome delight, a reasonable self-respect, adjustable sense of satisfaction. So let me just explain. Let's say you spent a few hours and made a perfect apple pie. Ah, you smell it and you know it's perfectly made. In fact, you're so happy that you're so tapped your shoulder and said, I'm so proud that I made this pie. Perfectly. I think I'm going to share with my mother. Now that type of pride, nothing wrong with it. It's under a reasonable self-respect. And we all need it. We do. Well, other side of pride means inordinate self-esteem. And this is type of pride the Babylon king cherished in his heart for many years. So we need to ask, then what is a biblical remedy of self-centered pride in our hearts? Well, Prophet Daniel plead with his royal king in Daniel chapter 4, verse 27, renounce your sin. So it is clear to us that the self pride and proudness deep rooted outside of God's glory is pronounced as sin. Renounce your sins by doing what is right. And that right is not doing something good for the community. Do what is right means let glory be belongs to God. May my life journey will belong to God. All the blessing, both in high and low, came from God. Now that is giving glory to God and doing what is right. Well, when King after seven years of reflecting under the judgment, finally said in chapter 4, verse 34, my sanity was 
restore. Just in case if you're wondering, the restored is used in the Bible for the act of repentance as well as for restoration. And in the Bible, primary means to turn away from one's way of life and turn God and his teaching. Now that is restoration. So we need to ask, after seven years, did king of Babylon really humble himself before God? Well, we have a few evidence that God has to judge a very proud king, yet restored him and made him very humble after seven years. Here it is. The Nebuchadnezzar is changed person. He has not only witnessed the power of God, but he has felt it in his own person. The king no longer relies on the power of physical force, but on the power of a personal testimony. And in fact, one of Bible commentary goes further by saying, Nebuchadnezzar praise whose God? Daniel's God and became a protector of divine person whom he has privileged challenged in his heart. Again, we might be asking, now how do we know that he actually became a protector of the divine person? Well, in the Old Testament, God said, my servant to the king of Babylon, not once, not twice, but three times in the Old Testament, after that, the seven years of that experience. So let's read together. In Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 8, Therefore the Lord Almighty says this, my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 6, My servant, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Jeremiah chapter 43, verse 10, I will send for my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon of Babylon. So here's the most important point. When we become genuine, humbly before God, God will call us my servant. Not only he will call us my servant, he will use us as one of many instruments by keeping ourselves humble before God. Well, let's continue move on to the second lesson from the book of Daniel. Before king of Babylon was punished for his pride, the verdict was announced. It was not a surprise attack. Clearly, verdict was announced. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. The decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict so the living may knew. The verdict was pronounced by, not by Daniel, not by government officials, but from the messenger from heaven. Daniel chapter 4 verse 17, the holy messenger considered this person to be a member of a special order of angel and decision of verdict in this case came as a result of God's consultation with his heavenly court. And let me just repeat it, from heavenly court. 
Sure, God has made the decision for himself, but for, for whatever it is, he turned to the heavenly court and received the final verdict. I have a simple question for all of us. Do we believe in God? Yes, we do with confidence. Do we believe in God's salvation for mankind? Well, our answer is yes, we do, with confidence. Do we believe that we are saved by Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior? Yes, 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 we have the evidence through the cross. Now here comes the next question to our Ontario congregation. Do we believe in God's verdict? for the mankind through the heavenly court? Well, for the Seventh-day Adventists with confidence, our answer is yes, because we believe in judgment seat of Christ. You see, for the Seventh-day Adventist community, we are well aware of judgment seat of Christ. Let me read a few Bible texts to you. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. And the Ancient of Days was seated. The court was seated. And the books were open. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Gospel, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. And Jesus said, Man will give account of it in the day of judgment. You see, for the Seventh-day Adventists, we call all these events the heavenly sanctuary and the investigative judgment. So here's to the next generation of Seventh-day Adventists. Remember this word, the investigative judgment, and soon we'll have a chance to look into more in-depth when we get to Daniel chapter 8. Remember this word. Well, I would like to share with you a new book. Just in case, as a Seventh-day Adventist member, that you want to look into the case of the investigate judgment, this is one of the finest books that is written by Pastor Marvin Morse. It is written specially for the lay leaders to understand. The investigative judgment, is it really biblical? Or is this something that just popped out of what the early Adventist leaders came out with? It's one of the finest books, and you should have it in your library. In this book, it says, the Seventh-day Adventist belief makes it very, very, very clear that this is how we understand the Judgment Day. The investigative judgment does not inform God, but reveals His justice. God knows our inside out. He does not need information, but it reveals His justice. The purpose of the investigative judgment is to reveal to the, all the angels the justice of God in his dealing with his people. Let's move to conclusion. Few years ago, I was very upset. In fact, when I found this something, I was shouting, this is not fair, this is not right. If you have health care insurance, did you know that top 1% per patients account for the 22% expense? Top 5% use 
up to 50% of U.S. health care spending. And when I got the information originally, I thought, this is not fair. Well, what about this information? I learned the top 5% of patients, they pay average $35,829 through insurance in a doctor's bill. But bottom 50% of patients pay only $232 average in doctor's bill through the insurance. And when I got this month's information, I thought, this is not right. Someone need to say that you need to be changed and make adjustment. Well, can I read a Bible text to you? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. And when we all stand before at the judgment seat of Christ, no one, no one dare to question or shout the final verdicts. When the final verdict is read out about Peter on, there's no way I'm going to shout, this is not right, this is not fair, I need a new trial. It's not going to happen. Why is it not going to happen? Well, because a wonderful word from the Psalms 89, verse 7 and 8, explains to us who is in the skies above can compare with the Lord. Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of holy ones, God is greatly feared, means he will receive the ultimate respect. For he is more awesome than all who surround him. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. That Bible text makes it clear. Someday when the final verdict gets called out, it's going to be fair and it's going to be the final. So brothers and sisters in Christ, the final verdict will come in. But before then, can I ask, will you love and accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Will you continue falling in love with him and daily walk as a modern-day disciple? It is important for us to read again that through the Daniel chapter 4, verse 17, the decision is announced by messenger. The holy ones declare the verdicts, and it's coming. So again, I would like to ask, Will you accept your Lord Jesus Savior? Will you continue falling in love with him? And will you give your hearts to Jesus Christ today? Let's pray. Loving Father, through Daniel chapter 4, verse 17, we have learned that 2,500 years ago, the final verdict is all about us. And we are grateful that before final verdict is called out, you gave us cross, Jesus Christ, and eternal life as gift to all of us. Help us to fall in love with you today. And thank you for giving us the community of the Seventh-day Adventist. In our loving Savior's name, amen.